hey, this is something that everybody deals with regardless of what platform it is you sell on or what you sell. People are going to lowball you. People are going to try to get you to give them what they want for less money than you're willing to take for it. And if you're not careful, you can find yourself on the losing end of that power battle. As an explanatory note, I am sick. That's why my voice sounds very cool right now. It's, it's not COVID, it's confirmed not COVID. But I figured I'd shoot a video when I had the, uh, uh, the Ron Perlman voice. So let me start by saying that lowballers live everywhere. They're like carp. They can live in any body of water. You will find them in every pond, every tributary, river, lake, whatever. There will be carp and they, they will not die. So you find them, if you, if you find them on eBay, you find them on Poshmark, you'll find them on Mercari, you'll find them on OfferUp for sure, uh, and on and on. It's just how people are. It's how people behave. Certain people are willing to push your boundaries much more aggressively and much further than other people. So my first piece of advice for it is to try to not take it personally because from their perspective, they're conducting a rational market transaction of trying to get more for less. That's how the market works. This question of lowballers really comes down to a question of how does one negotiate on price? Uh, and your willingness to negotiate and the distance that you're willing to cover to meet your potential buyer where they want to be met it should depend on some factors that are that have to do with how old the inventory is, how much you need or want to move it, and your cost of acquisition and how much you stand to make. So to illustrate this, if, for example, I was sitting on a suit that I'd had in my inventory for two years, let's say it's a Hart Schaffner Marks suit, something that is no longer really worth much of anything at all and I have a couple of these and I'll be lucky if I don't have to donate them because Hart Shafter Marks died a slow painful death as a brand and their suits just don't sell anymore at least not for me. So let's say I have a Hart Shafter Marks suit that's sitting at 150 bucks because I've been negligent and I haven't priced it down to try to entice people to, to buy it. Let's say I got it for 15 bucks so $15 cost of goods, 150 bucks. Somebody comes along and sends me a lowball offer of 75. In that circumstance, I would without a moment's hesitation accept that lowball offer. I wouldn't bother trying to uh, swing that into a, a higher uh, a higher price. I would just take the 75. I wouldn't counter offer because I don't want to risk scaring the buyer off because not every buyer is sending you lowball offers with the intention to haggle. Some of them are just true lowballers. They have arrived at a price that is comfortable to them. They are making that offer. It may be a one-time offer and they may not want to play ball because for most human beings, haggling is not something that we relish. Uh, in fact, when I first started reselling, uh, I was basically afraid of haggling. It, it seemed like this huge chore, very stressful, and I would never certainly haggle on price when I was sourcing. That has changed. It's something that you get used to over time. It's something that you become more comfortable with. Most people don't want to do it. Most people just want to get the stuff for cheap. If, if they had offered 75 for my $150, item and I had said no you are a scum lowballer and I I am an honorable upstanding reseller and I don't accept lowball offers and I don't negotiate with terrorists and decline the offer automatically which don't do which I'll talk about or uh, if I had attempted to start haggling with him if I had counter offered something like 125 or 115 uh, to try to you know cajole them into giving me more money. I, in my experience, that's a misstep. Sometimes lowballers are a blessing because they're willing 
to take bad inventory off, off of your hands. And it doesn't have to be expensive stuff. Sometimes I will take a low ball offer just to break even on a less expensive piece that was a bad buy. Let's talk about the opposite case, which is the majority of my inventory that I sell now, which is stuff that's, that is in demand and stuff that I do expect to make a decent profit on and that I'm not willing to let go for expediency just to get the, the very fast flip out of it. So for example, um, I had a Patagonia fleece up for sale for uh, three weeks and I got a bunch of lowball offers on it. I had it listed on Poshmark for 30 bucks and I got a bunch of you know, 15, 20 buck offers. I would just decline, decline, decline. I wouldn't even negotiate. Same on eBay, I just wouldn't even negotiate because here's the thing. Um, the, the way negotiation works is it tends to be this reciprocal leapfrog thing where they offer you something that's too low and then you offer something that feels more acceptable to you but it's still a percentage off. So for example, if I had something for 25 bucks, someone offered me 15 and I come back and offer 23.5, which is something I do a lot. If they don't accept the 23.5 and they keep incrementally increasing uh, their, their offer, and they do it in a way that doesn't piss me off, if, if it looks like we're actually escalating towards some midpoint, it's easy to get swept up in that and wind up selling the thing for 20 when it was definitely going to sell for 25 and now I've, I've made significantly less margin on that item which doesn't sound like all that big of a deal, but if you're doing this all the time, you're kind of robbing yourself of uh, some good profit. So in cases where I'm selling items like that, where they're really in demand and based on my pricing strategy, I know that they're on offer at the bottom of the market. They're already getting a good deal. I play hardball hardball i'm a hard ass i'm not rude but um uh, i i stonewall people all the time and the way that i do this is let's say i have a shirt on offer for 25 bucks somebody comes in offers 15 i just decline and i don't uh i don't set the auto decline thing because i don't there is a possibility in my mind that that shirt even though i am almost 100 percent confident it will sell within three months, shit happens and it might wind up sitting in my store for a year. And I don't want the auto decline on a 15 buck offer in that case. I would, I would rather just take the 15 buck offer and be done with it. So I, I manually decline and uh, I'm comfortable doing that because of my sourcing strategy. Because I know that I'm sourcing stuff that is in really high demand, I'm gonna get more chances I'm gonna get more offers and somebody is eventually gonna buy it. There's two things that happen when you just decline. One is you never see the person again, they're gone, which fine, who cares? Uh, the second is they will come back with a higher offer and I will give them a couple of chances to, to offer me something that's high enough to where when I begin that incremental lowering that that meeting process of me lowering the price and then offering slightly higher if if i start playing ball at a point where i can tell that that midpoint if we get there is still going to be reasonably profitable and isn't going to hurt then then i'll start i'll start negotiating but i will decline 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 until they they get to that point and it doesn't, doesn't always work out. Sometimes I lose them there. And again, who cares? Because there are more buyers for this stuff. So for example, shirt for 25 bucks, I get uh, an offer for 15, decline. 10 minutes later, I get an offer for 17, decline. Person gets the message, uh, get another offer for 20. Now I will say 23.5, and I will put a message a lot of the times in the message box that says uh, some some you know polite thing like um, 
thanks to Raw for I'd be comfortable giving it to you for this amount or some, something like that. Um, and now we can start to actually negotiate and I, I become a nice guy, but they, they have to kind of ante up. They have to come to the table ready to you know, play on my terms. Sometimes it is actually good to show people that you are willing to play ball. So if I'm in a generous mood or if I'm getting a low ball offer on something that I'm not as confident has the buyer base for it, something that I think may sit for a little bit longer, then I will try proactively to coax the person into sending me a reasonable offer. So if they send me a 10 buck offer on a $25 item, I will send back the 23.5 offer with a polite note saying, you know, I'll meet you here, something like that. And then if they continue to lowball me, then I'll hard decline. I'll hard, hard decline. I'll consider blocking them actually if they keep lo aggressively lowballing, like if they're raising their price by a dollar. Sometimes I will just block them. I don't want to deal with it. And if they end up buying the thing, it's not like that's a very promising buyer. It seems like someone who's going to cause problems. So uh, don't be afraid to block low ballers in extreme cases. But sometimes that does the trick. Sometimes you can you can coax them into sending you a reasonable offer, and then you can negotiate in a way that leaves you both reasonably happy. Occasionally, you will get people that get really pissed off by this and you will get messages in your DMs on on eBay or wherever calling you unreasonable or asking you for a direct quote of what your lowest offer is and those people aren't actually necessarily being difficult. Sometimes people will just say, all right, I just don't want to negotiate. Just tell me what your lowest acceptable price is and I'll tell you if that's acceptable to me or not. And the, the straight shooter buyer, it's fine. I'll just say, okay, well, I would be willing to give it to you for 23 bucks. The people that try to cajole you, twist your arm and guilt you into lowering your price, just ignore them. Um, that there's another phenomenon that happens where when you'll receive an offer, it'll have this sob story in the, the text and you can kind of tell when it's real and when it isn't. Sometimes people will say, we'll give you this clearly fictitious story about how it's for their uh, mother who's died and resurrected twice and she's gonna die again and she needs, uh, she needs the uh, rubber gram men's 3XL shirt to ensure her passage across the river sticks or whatever you know like um just insane nonsense which <laughs> happens sometimes um uh, don't be seduced by it a lot of the times it's fake also don't be completely hard-hearted i've had cases where i've gotten messages about shirts from people that said you know this is for my, i had one late i I, don't, I won't tell the story because it's not modest to boast about doing nice things but people uh you know sometimes people are actually in some kind of emotional need of whatever it is that you're selling even something as uh, unlikely as a shirt so uh use your judgment but don't don't let people strong arm you into giving them a discount because they're whining and demanding or because they're pleading and trying to pull your heartstrings and you, you have to just have a sense and instinct for when people are being genuine and when they aren't. There is uh, one thing to, I guess, look out for, or if you are buying stuff on eBay yourself, try this. It's this, this tonality that completely works on me for some reason, where buyers won't give me a sob story, they won't try to intimidate me into giving them a discount, but they'll just be hyper communicative and forward. And they'll, you know, they'll send me a message that's really well composed, properly capitalized and punctuated, friendly, just saying like, hey, like, I, I'm just, uh, I, I don't mean to insult you with a lowball offer, but this is what I would be willing to pay. I have a little bit of wiggle room on this. If this is too low for you, totally understand. Um, signs, whatever, Emily, Mark. Um, always works on, or almost always works on me, or I'm, I'm always more willing to go out of my way to give those people a discount. It's some ape psychology thing. So try that if, <laughs> if you are a low baller. So I hope that helps. Don't get too frustrated and don't get um, your, you know, bonnet in a, a knot. What is it? a bee in the bonnet? Don't get a bee in your bonnet's knot. 
about uh, low ballers and don't be afraid of haggling because it is something that can be very useful to you. All right, I'm gonna lay down and um, um, curl up into a ball now and uh, recover. This is Burt Reynolds signing off.